Thank you, Craig. Uh, you see the full full screen here, right? I do indeed. All right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so I will uh, uh, just go through a quick introductions on Benu and uh, talk about our BNG solution. That is, uh, this is cloud native disaggregated BNG and what its advantages are. Uh, also, as uh, Craig's mentioned, so we do have a demo that uh, we pre-recorded. So it's part of the presentation uh, to show a launching of uh, 1 million subscribers. And uh, also last uh, through a summary slide. So just on Bennu, we have been in uh, existence for more than 10 years now and uh, headquarters in Boston. Our mission is really to provide uh, edge services software and network functions for the communication service providers. So really focusing on the service provider side of the uh, uh, business here. Uh, our software has already been deployed in the production at many service providers across the globe, especially in North America and Europe, as you see. And uh, it passes about seven petabytes of data every day uh, from 24 million uh, homes and businesses worldwide. So the, the software that we're talking is really tested in production environments. So uh, where our focus is, we, uh, we, we, we really work on the fixed line services side, which is 80% uh, of the, all the traffic in the, uh, for the worldwide. Uh, the core infrastructure services shown in the middle here in the WAG and TWAG are the wireless access gateway and the trusted wireless access gateway functionality. It is a subscriber management platform for public hotspot and uh, mobile uh, uh, offload services. BNG is the subscriber management for the broadband services uh, for DSL and the fiber connections. And uh, more recently, we have been working uh, on the wireless and wireless uh, conversions uh, and building AGF and eventually AGF plus UPF uh, network functions for the fixed uh, and 5G conversions. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, the SASE gateway uh, stands for Secure Access Service Edge. It uh, works with our uh, cloud infrastructure layers uh, to provide SMB and enterprise security for the services, uh, service providers edge. Uh, this service can be run as standalone or on top of our infrastructure services, like on top of BNG, uh, in case there's a need for an architecture where services need to be offered from the same edge where BNG is running. So, and also all this software can be ported onto very small UCPE boxes. Again, the, uh, keeping it flexible for deployment point of view, where service provider really wants to take their edge all the way to the customer prem. So that can be done. Uh, based on these, this kind of architecture. And all our software runs on uh, hypervisor or as bare metal uh, and on x86 uh, platforms or ARM processors. So uh, BNG, uh, it's designed uh, as CUPS architecture based on broadband forums at TR459. Uh, separating this uh, control and user plane has been uh, many advantages and it's already a de facto architecture for the packet core side. Uh, with this architecture, user planes are deployed at various edges within the service provider network uh, while keeping the control plane more centralized. Uh, main reason is to so that you can have your subscriber management and operations uh, can be done from one centralized place. And the user planes are deployed uh, based on service needs. As uh, Marcus was mentioning earlier in his presentation on network slices, the low latency services can specific uh, user planes can be very close to the customer, uh, while generic broadband services can be offered from user planes that are more close to the internet edges. Uh, also, some user planes uh, for like services like business uh, services or for CDNs, uh, they can be moved in between uh, based on the again service provider and network architecture and needs are. Uh, also more user planes can be added uh, as part of in-service upgrade or uh, uh, on, the, on the need of a service, or you can actually add just more cores to the existing user planes uh, as the service demands changes. Because of this flexibility uh, and simplicity, uh, we anticipate about 75% uh, CapEx uh, and 80% OPEX savings with this architecture. And at the same time, like providing really simplified operations and better user experience. 
So uh, for the demo today, I will show you the day one operations of launching a new BNG service, which includes uh, two control planes running in one-to-one -one runs model, uh, and then we'll have uh, 50 user planes running in end-to-end -end redundancy model. And over total, we will have uh, 1 million IPOE and PPPOE subscribers onboarded uh, with this day one operation. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the control plane will be talking TR 459, the PFCP protocol, uh, as part of the standards that we have from Broadband Forum. So going deeper into the uh, what the arch what the demo architecture looks like, uh, we have uh, the one Kubernetes cluster that uh, has a four physical nodes, like four Dell machines here, and then we have one virtual node that's running in actually in a VMware cluster. So all these nodes together creates one Kubernetes cluster for us. And the control plays are running, uh, as I mentioned before, in the one-to-one redundancy -one model uh, behind one CP service. And the user planes are running on these four nodes below. Uh, each node one and node two is a Dell 740s. So it's a beefier machines. Uh, so we will be running 18 user planes on each. So and the node three and node four is uh, smaller machines and they will be running uh, seven user plane each. So total 50 user planes, they all have a SRIV connectivity uh, to the, to the Exia uh, IX network tool where we will be running the generating the traffic. The, all the S tag and C tag information is uh, below here with the IP ranges. Uh, the other main thing is the, the, we will be launching everything from our operations portal. So, uh, uh, so that, uh, you don't need to go into these hypervisors or understanding the, any of the hypervisor thing, but you're really working everything to, through one pane of glass. So with that, uh, I will start my, the, uh, the demo, which was recorded, uh, uh last week. We are going to show you day one operations of uh, Bennu Cloud BNG, which uh, will have uh, 1 million subscribers onboarded. This uh, includes uh, 900,000 IPOE subscribers and uh, 100,000 PPPOE subscribers, which we will do by launching two control planes and 50 user planes. For this, we are using Bennu's operations portal, uh, which right now is showing you all the existing uh, deployments, but let's go specifically into the BNG deployments uh, where you see what we are running in our labs. It's a, a service name with the, the, what type of service it is, what's the IP address, the default namespace, uh, and the external IP and how long it's been running. So let's go and uh, launch a new service as part of the day one. What you need to provide is the the, the cluster host IP address with the username and password and the deployment name. The deployment name can be any string that can be that will be used later on and provide the deployment file configuration file. I will go in more details what this configuration file is, but uh, once you click on the launch button, the it's going to send information, all this information to the, the Kubernetes host where it will uh, interact with the Benus uh, operators and, uh, and start to deploy the containers. So we already see the two of the containers, the control plane containers are up and running. And now we see many more user plane containers are coming up as well. Let's go look into the configuration file that I was talking to you about. So. This was showing you, it's a YAML file that shows the control plane. Uh, definition of the control plane is running in a high availability mode uh, with two replicas. And uh, here's the image name, and it has a six CPUs, virtual CPUs, and 80 gig of uh, RAM. Now, virtual CPUs are the hyper-threaded CPUs for the Intel x86 processors. So each Physical core is uh, divided into two hyper-threaded virtual CPUs. So when we're talking six virtual CPUs here, it really is three physical cores. And same thing, we're going to the 
user plane side, our user plane pod has two containers, one with one vCPU and the six gigabit of RAM, gigabyte of RAM, and the second container has three vCPUs with two gigabyte of uh, RAM and 11 gigabytes of the huge pages. And it's using the SRIOV interface uh, for the connectivity into the, into the network. Now let's go back and see what's going on at the, uh, at the pod side. So we have much more user plane pods come, coming up. This, this process can take a few minutes. So we will just fast forward it for now and uh, come back when it's ready. Here we see the pods have been launched. So let's go back into the, the deployment that we just started, uh, which is three minutes ago. Uh, once you click on the deployments, uh, what you'll see is the, the information about the deployment control plane. This is the information about the active name. Also memory, it's using 55 GB of memory and about 15% of the CPU is being used. Uh, this has been running for the last three minutes for both active and standby. And here are the standby and active IP addresses. The sessions are zero as expected. And this is the build number that uh, we were using as part of the deployment. Now we can go back down to see list of all the user planes that are uh, up and established through PFCP messages, so TR459. So it looks like we have about 48 and two more needs to come in. Uh, and uh, we'll keep an eye on them and make sure that they, we do show all 50s connected. Here on the, in the user plane side list, we see memories, uh, 1.6 GB of memories used, uh, and then 35, 31% uh, CPU. Go down to see all the user planes, and here's the syslogs from the control plane uh, to make sure we have no errors uh, showing up on the control plane side. Let's go back up and, uh, and uh, start the uh, PPPOE, uh, sorry, the IPOE sessions on the uh, control plane side. So here, uh, well, I'm logging into the IX network, which is Xia tool, and uh, we have uh, streams defined for our 900,000 IPOE subscribers. So let's go and start the, the, the enable the scripts and start the traffic by just unsuspending these uh, uh, scripts. It will start sending uh, IPOE messages to the user planes. And here at the bottom, you do see the counters increment where RX and TX both are now coming. That means the user planes are receiving the registration messages and now we're getting a message back, uh, response coming back from those user planes for those subscribers that are being registered. And going back to the control plane, uh, we should see the sessions uh, showing up uh, soon. Uh, there you go. So we have about 250,000 uh, sessions. These are all IPOE sessions that are established now. And let's go into detail onto the user plane uh, pod. What does that, does that look like? So this user plane specifically has 19,969 sessions. Uh, here we're showing some of the interfaces stats, how many bytes are processed. Uh, also looking into deeper onto the interfaces, how the SRIV interface, now if there are any RX or TX errors, and any what the packets received. Here are some of the log messages we have, and then the CPU and memory utilization for that specific user plane. Now let's go back to the control plane and see if we have all the user planes that were supposed to register are there. We can see all the 50 user planes right now, so we're good. Now uh, let's start. Uh, let's start the. PPPOE subscribers, they, since we are using IX network, which is a stateless tool, uh, so we have to uh, build up all the 100,000 scripts by hand. It's a test tool limitations, so we are uh, enabling those scripts one by one, uh, and uh, I'm speeding up the process here since it takes a lot of time, but the but main thing is it's going through all the 14 uh, the 16 uh, PPPOE messages for each subscribers and there are 100,000 of the subscribers. 
So uh, once everything is ready, once we go back to the operations portal, we see we do have the 1 million subscribers connected and it's using about 60 gigabytes of uh, RAM uh, in the control plane. Let's go into the Kubernetes uh, host and we just check how many pods with DNGs are, config are up and running. Uh, you can see we do have two control planes on the top and then all the way down 50 user planes. So we're now logging into our Benus uh, control plane CLI and uh, we're running some of the commands here to show PFCP nodes. And this provides how many all the uh, user planes, uh, their PFCP status which is accepted and number of uh, subscribers that are connected onto the user plane. So we see 20,000 subscribers and 20,000 uh, and all of them are in the accepted state. Next, we will run the NG subscriber summary that will give us the total number of subscribers connected on that control plane and also will provide us information about which type of subscribers they are. Here we see we have a 1 million total subscribers connected, current subscribers. IPOE is 900,000 and then we have a PPOE subscriber and those are 100,000. Now uh, let's go back to the portal and still see we have 1 million connected. We have 50 user planes uh, connected as well and we're using about uh, 60 gigabytes of RAM for this whole 1 million subscribers. In summary, uh, we just showed you a BNG CUPS architecture based on TR459, uh, where one control plane is managing multiple user planes. As you can see, manage management of the deployment is very easy. In the demo, we are showing uh, control plane and user plane running on the same cluster, but they can also be geographically separated on different clusters. Uh, many of the day two operations like scale up and scale down in-service upgrades can be done with the deployment and uh, all user planes are running on x86 hardware. We are seeing great x86 based performance numbers that we can share after the call if uh, someone is interested in that. Uh, with that, thank you very much.